Thanks for tuning in into this video because today we have an unboxing and it's going to be the unboxing of the much anticipated Kaweco Piston Sport. And to start us off, I have two other Kaweco Sport models to stack up that new pen against. Now let's start off with this right here. We have the Kaweco All Sport, which also has that, it's aluminum, but it's also that matte anodized surface, which is what the Kaweco Piston Sport is also marketed to have, and which we'll get to very soon. Uh, and then we have next to that, the Kaweco Sport in demo. This is a demonstrator to demonstrate the insides and pretty much giving you, you know, behind the curtain scenes in your hands of how a Kaweco modern sport is built today. So that's why I have here, and this is definitely, you know, it's plastic, not glass. Uh, if you're familiar with these pens, <laughs> just sharing some fun facts behind those. And you can see they're very similar in size. And when you look at the specs on Kaweco's site, they have a lot of the same, you know, dimensions and the weight difference obviously is gonna be di different from the plastic to the metal. And so we'll get behind those other details with the unboxing of the Kaweco Piston Sport. So let's go ahead and get into that. I'm gonna go ahead and put this to the side and get our box here, which uh, I would like to just give a shout out to Stilo and Stile a uh, shop in Italy. They did a great job behind making it very easy uh, to order on their site, quick shipping, and um, I've ordered from them in the past and they're just great customer service as well. And to be a shop, one of the first to allow uh, orders of the Kaweco Piston Sport and to get here so fast, that's a huge applause for me. There is no endorsement, uh, paid endorsement behind this whatsoever, but wanna recognize good when there is good. Okay, so this is the box. I'm gonna go ahead and open it off camera just to make it easy and less of a pain to kind of handle here. Okay, the sides are cut. Let's go ahead and open this. Uh, here's a sneak peek of what we'll get into. I'm gonna put this to the side for now. And of course we have the box for the Kaweco Piston Sport. Okay, here we have the Kaweco boxing, or packaging rather. Here's the back. They did beautiful design as they always do uh, with their boxes. They put some extra design here on the external packaging. Uh, love the modern vintage design that you get from Kaweco. Uh, I'd also want to point something out here. It's pretty cool that they've offered tutorials and they have a cool, um, I wouldn't know how to describe it, but they, a cool visual where it's kind of a 3D model of how this all looks and when you ink it up, go on their site, Kaweco's company site, look for this pen and they have some amazing um, supportive material there. All right, so let's open this up. That's what we're here for. It comes in this tin uh, as their other pens, uh, especially the AL Sports, they always come in a nice tin box. You can also love that lifted design. There's a lift, can't see it here on video, but um, there is a lift when you kind of glide your fingers over that design. Okay. So I believe we just kind of twist off to make it easy. And here we have the layout. Got your sticker and your material information materials. Put that to the side. Really love this kit, by the way. They give you a full kit of, you got your pen and you have a nice 32 millimeter uh, bottle of their Royal Blue ink. It's amazing. I 
Also, I'm looking forward to, I'm going to put the pen aside for now, uh, but I'm looking forward to them releasing more colors, uh, more of their ink colors in this bottle. I just love this design specifically for the Piston Sport and maybe uh, there's future limited edition release with limited edition ink. Just a little thing, a hopeful wish there. <laughs> Let's just get into the pen. Okay. Wow. This feels really nice in hand already. I barely got it out of the box and I'm really feeling um, this design and how it's been thoroughly thought out. Uh, you can see here in focus you have the Kaweco Sport I love that it's subtle it's not as you would see in the other L Sport uh, which I'll highlight in a bit where you see the white lettering I think that's a smart and very uh, precious design that they decided to not color that in white to leave that subtle with the pen of the dot design, it really continues to um, give that nice, elegant nod to their classic Kaweco Piston Sport. It's just a really nice looking pen. Go ahead and unscrew it. Doesn't take much to unscrew. I'll go ahead and do that once more. One, two, three, two and a half, I would say, more like it. There you have the pen. You can post it. It was designed to be posted. I think to make this a little easier to demonstrate, I'm going to go ahead and bring this tray back and get these to the side here for now. And uh, here you have the pen. Just trying to find. All right, there we go. You have here the on the finial the logo. Then you have the blind cap. So let's go ahead and just kind of lay out here, which is why I wanted the tray uh, before I kept going here. Be able to lay out the pen in its order of how you can see it in its full. There we go. Got your cap, your pen, the turning knob, your cap, your blind cap there. Really love, uh, you know, I've seen promos and, you know, the promotional material that they've shared thus far really gives good examples. But in person, this ink window is amazing. It has a nice little tinted blue. Let's move this to the side right here. Uh, but look, up against the white, you can see that nice tinted blue-gray. And it's a pretty nice big window, um, which I really appreciate and love. You're going to be able to see your ink, giving it that nice, you know, even as you hold it. This is the way I hold my pen. Um, you can still see that ink window doesn't get lost. It's not too small where you're wondering, yeah, I can see my ink, but I can't really see how much ink I have left. Um, here you also have another logo. I love that they did not skip on some of these smaller details when it comes to the design of the pen. They could have not put that finial there on the, um, or that logo mark on the turning knob. They could have just left it blank, uh, all black, 
but to add that nice touch really just makes this pen even more uh, amazing. So there we have the pen. Um, let's look at the blind cap really quick. Just very, has those nice faceted, kind of like bottomed out there. Okay. Got the clip. Feels nice and sturdy. All right, there you have the pen. Let's get into some details. One quick thing before I get into more details about this pen and uh, filling it up and giving it a test run, I wanna point out this ring. I really love that they added this ring here on this design. And it's not some very thin little ring. It's actually a pretty nice, I would even say, my eyes are a little deceiving with the light. It kind of looks like a little, little cut there, but it's a nice uh, distinguished ring on the pen. Okay. And there it is once more. Let's get into some fun details. I really appreciate the Coetco also did with this. I already mentioned some, you know, the ring, it's a little thicker than I thought it was. Um, the clip added to the pen, designed to be in there. Uh, I did see that you can remove this. I don't have that grip on me right now to take this off, uh, but I did see someone demonstrate that you can remove this and even take off the clip. Uh, you will have a gap if you remove the clip, but to be able to have the clip designed this fashion rather than the slip-on clip that they have for the other sports, I really love this design choice. Preferred in my opinion. Now another design that Kaveco did with this pen is the nib. This is their steel nib, however, what I love about their all sport, their normal edition, is that you can remove the nib unit should you want to replace it, you know, maybe something you hit the nib or something. You can replace or swap out your nib. And they brought that design choice with this piston sport. And just like that, I'm able to easily unscrew the nib unit out of the pen. I'm seeing here that they have included a little washer. This is a gray um, housing of the nib unit, which I think is also a very smart design choice because let me get into our regular Kaveco All Sport. This is another metal one. I'm gonna go ahead and put that there. Actually, we don't need to remove that for now. Uh, and just as we saw with that one, this is very easy to remove the housing or nib unit from the pen. And you can see that, you know, there is no washer there. It's black versus what you have here. Let's go ahead and just zoom in a bit there. Here you have two of the different units. As uh, I have, an, I'm an owner of multiple Kaveco Sport pens and Al Sports, and now this one. This is going to be very helpful to easily, quickly, with the naked eye, distinguish the two different nibs uh, between just by color. By color, I can already tell the. This is going to be the nib unit for my piston sports versus these are gonna be the nib units for my owl sports. And something that you're also seeing here is the thickness here, that lip of the housing unit versus this one. It's a lot thinner. It's kind of protrudes, has that lift up. Another thing to note is by the naked eye, you can just see that length 
difference. Very similar in some designs as you would expect from a housing unit, but that is so that they had more space in the housing for your ink, or actually the body of the pen for you to have more ink. And so they had to put some extra work in design. They couldn't just take this, put it in here, and you can see already, if I we had done that, um, it starts to protrude into this window. And um, from what I understand, these do not. You can kind of see, <laughs> you could kind of screw it there, uh, and then you kind of see how that fits because it's not designed to go into the this pen. It's designed to go back easily into any other owl sport of the Kaveco. Let's take another look at this nib unit. Maybe easier to put back on the pen. And just like that, screw it back in. Don't want to over tight it, just a nice snug. Um, I got a medium for this unit, or sorry, for this pen. Um, but also, this is where what was also, it, what was the extra item included into the package was, I ordered a second nib unit. Let's go ahead, remove this. And here we have a double broad. You can see that the double broad and a medium. I got a spare unit because I am a big fan of the Kaveco Sports. I love to use their pens on a regular rotation uh, with my pens. And so my plans for this particular pen is to send off this pen and this extra nib to a nib grinder to give it the customization that I want out of these nibs. Uh, I love a cursive italic and possibly a nice forgiving pocket um, architect nib for the double broad. So I'll probably update or publish another video when that is completed. For now, I am going to enjoy this pen and give it a test run. So before I ink this pen up, let's go ahead and put this back and compare this pen with their other models. So here I have the Kaveco Piston Sport, the Kaveco All Sport, and the Kaveco Sport Demo. Uh, just go ahead and slide this all the way to the end. And when you read up on the specs, a lot of the length opened and closed come, they're being marketed to be the same. So for example, the Kaveco uh, Piston Sport, their dimensions is opened, it's 13 centimeters, which is 5.11 inches. And then closed, as you're seeing here, it's 10.5 centimeters, which in inches is 4.13. And when you look at the specs for these other two pens, they're also marketed to be the same. Where they vary is obviously the weight. So the Kaveco Piston is coming in at 22 grams, which is 0.77 ounces. This All Sport is 21 grams at 0.7 ounces. And then this one here is coming in at uh, 10.7 grams, which is, which is 0.37 ounces. You know, around the half market, about, you know, the ebbs and flows of that. So there are your specs, uh, and you can see that lengthwise, this kind of looks a little bit taller, um, and even kind of, let's go ahead and just zoom in here. It's not dramatically taller, but you can see 
the slight differences there, which is completely okay with me. Uh, a couple other pens I wanted to bring into the mix for comparison here is their Lily Putt. This is their Fireball Lily Putt with a brass clip. Uh, you can see that next to that. Let's go ahead and uncap these and post them so you can see how they stack up against each other. So here are the pens, unscrewed, posted, screwed on, and you can see how that varies. Obviously the Lily Put uh, Fireball is much thinner. It's a thinner body, uh, but that range in your hand is gonna be pretty similar with that small difference here across these three. Okay, so here we have uh, a couple of pens stacked up against the Piston Sport that are also piston fillers. I don't cap my Lamy 2000, so in my preference, this is what it stacks up against in the position I would pick it up um, and start writing with it. Here we have the Twisby Eco and the M800 by Pelican. The, it's a food nib, so it has that, you know, curve up. It's not broken or bent, but there you go. Let's bring back the Fireball. And then for just comparison from some of my smaller pens, I have here the Sailor Starburst um, Pro Gear, which is on the smaller end. And actually I'm gonna move these pens and put that up against here to demonstrate from a small pen, pocket pen, uh, the Pro Gear Slim and how that stacks up against a Kaweco Piston Sport. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a bit there. So there is some demonstrations of the pens stacked up against other piston filler pens, a smaller considered pocket pen, and then the lily putt. And once more, we have the pens capped and stacked up against the piston uh, here for demonstration. Let's go ahead and ink this pen up and give it a test run. A quick note I wanted to share while I'm filming this, and I've capped this pen a couple times, I wanna highlight something about the blind cap. I, for one, I saw a lot of feedback when this pen was first announced of its release. A lot of, there's a lot of feedback on people liking it, hating it, wanting something different. Um, and my opinion at the time was, I love it. I don't want a cap or a blind cap that's just going to move along with the movements. If I put this in my pocket, if I put this in my bag, um, and if I cap the pen, I'm, well, I wasn't aware and I don't want it to move because should this move or I would say influence the knob, then the ink is going to obviously disperse and then it disperses into the cap. Uh, and depending on how long it starts to overflow. And as you can imagine, now you have ink in your pants or in your pocket, or even when you, let's say it's not as dramatic, when you uncap it, you're gonna have a mess literally on your hands or on your surface, should that happen. So as I'm filming this and I'm uncapping it, uh, posting it, I notice something. So for a quick demonstration, uh, you can see that the blind cap is in its position. I can't screw it any further. You know, righty tighty, lefty loosey type of thing. And if I turn it this way, obviously it loosens up and I have exposed the knob to, you know, ready for filling. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put that back on and what I noticed while I was filming this and posting the pen, uh, you know, I like to have that orientation of the clip to the nib. And that's a nice fit. However, um, if you are turning your pen when you want to uncap or unpost this pen, 
I wouldn't really recommend that because I can feel that if I twist, you can even hear that the blind cap has unscrewed. I don't know if I continue that position if the blind cap is gonna get stuck or it's just gonna come out should I just continue to pull this out. But at this moment, because it's connected to the blind cap, the cap of the pen is now gripping the blind cap. I can't, you can see that it's secure. I'm shaking the pen and the cap is not gonna come off. You can even feel that it's loose. You can even hear it. Okay, should I proceed at this point? Now that's exposed and my blind cap is in there. Do I like that? I, at this time, I don't know. <laughs> it makes me nervous because I don't want my parts to get stuck in any position. But I think in this case, it's safe to assume that if I just put the pen body back in screw the cap, you can feel that engagement. Now I can proceed with unclipping or, you know, taking off the cap and here I am. And you can see there's been no damage to the blind cap. And a part of me is, do I want this pen to do that? If I'm in the writing position, and let's say I'm noticing my ink is very low. And I just wanna make sure I have more ink to proceed with my long form writing if that's what I'm doing. Then it's pretty easy for me to go ahead and uncap the entire you know, blind cap and pen cap unit together and proceed with going to fill the pen. Um, or you know, the, the other part of me is I just don't want that blind cap to move at all. I don't know. At this time, I'm kind of indifferent. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, put some real use to this pen, get comfortable with it, put it to some daily use, and maybe I can form a stronger opinion. But at this time, I'm a little on the indifferent. I don't know whether that I'm going to like that, hate that, uh, feel uncomfortable about it. At first, I was uncomfortable because I wasn't sure if this would get stuck in here and I couldn't just put the pen back. But as you saw, when you post the pen, you can, you know, just, you get your positions, you take the cap off. Or if you do need to fill that, that's kind of convenient, right? To just proceed, you know, get your bottle of ink and fill the pen, whatnot. So I wanted to demonstrate or discuss that before I actually had ink in here, just in case. Uh, but you can see that in that entire time, the knob is not moving whatsoever. And that's what a blind cap is supposed to do. It's supposed to protect, you know, it's gonna, the blind cap is gonna move throughout these threads and not influence this knob. So that's what you want out of a blind cap. And yeah, let's go ahead and put that back. I, yeah, more and more, I think I'm okay with that. But again, I wanna put it to some normal use and have maybe a, a more solid opinion after its usage. Uh, I love Kaweco's Royal Blue, but I'm gonna go with another ink for now, which is already open. And this is Pilot's Iroshizuku's Kanpeki. I'm gonna go ahead and fill that up and we'll go ahead and give this a writing test. Let's go ahead and do a writing sample for information purposes. This is the paper I'm using, Nemosin. It's the B6, really great paper. Um, I have found it to be very pleasant with all sorts of different fountain pens, uh, different ink flows and all that. So I've gone ahead and filled it up. Let's just get a nice look at how that ink window looks now that, the, now that it has ink. Uh, you can see, I wonder if I can, if I just tilt it up a bit, 
you get that nice hue of the Compeki coming through. Should I move that ink? Now the ink window is pretty dark, uh, but you can see that hint of blue in there. Uh, but once you settle the ink or the pen upwards for a little bit, you get that nice little window there. You can see clearly that looks nice as a filled up pen. That looks really nice. Very easy to ink up. Um, as with all pistons, you have to do some nice cleanup if you don't want that ink on your hands. And if I wasn't filming, I'd traditionally just kind of put a small dab of water just to clean the body a little bit more, uh, but this is fine. I'm gonna go ahead and cap the pen. With the pen full, I feel like there's still, it's a nice weight to the pen. It's not too much, it's not too, you know, it's not too heavy, not too light. It's that nice Kaweco metal pen that I enjoy using. So this is a, a medium nib, a normal medium nib. So let's go ahead and give this a run. Let's see if I can zoom in just a tad. Nice ink flow, really, really nice. Um, let's go ahead and just do some normal lines. I'm on considered more of like a light writer. I don't put a lot of pressure on my nibs or when I'm writing, uh, only if I want specific, you know, um, characters out of my writing. But in this case, in my normal writing, it's very light to the touch. Should I wanna put a little more pressure? I can, you can see that difference. It's a very nice inky nib. Let's go ahead and do the Do some quick writing, just. I love it. This feels really great and it looks really great. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, let's, what's another test we can do here? Just you can see how that reacts to the ink. Not bad. Uh, reverse writing. You know, it's not intended. It wasn't, there's no special grind to it to uh, support that. But obviously if you write slow, it's definitely available. It is a little on the toothy end, scratchy side. You can get, get a Nibmeister to support you refining that if you wanted to. And uh, let's do a couple when you write slower, it's more manageable. If you write fast on the reverse, it's gonna struggle a little bit, as you can see here, a little bit. Okay. And this is a, just put medium. Is that how you spell that ink? I think so, yeah, the little dash. So there we have it, the much anticipated Kaweco Piston Sport. I have a couple thoughts for Kaweco, or just feedback and just say, I really am thankful that they got to this place that they were able to finally manufacture, produce, and get it out to a wide distributed market for us to have this pen, the pen community, for years, and I'm only maybe three, four years into this um, community of pen collecting. And I know that everybody has been asking for this version of this pen for a very long time because of their classic, classic piston filler uh, pen. 
everybody loved the design and we were wondering why hasn't Caveco done it? Like with all business, it takes time, research and development. You can't always just take what worked in the past and just kind of rinse and repeat, especially that it's now a completely different business. It's a completely different market out there. And Caveco finally gave us what we wanted. And they did not skimp on, they didn't cut corners to get here either. And that's what I love about this pen, just in the short time that I've unboxed this and used this for this review. This pen feels good, looks good. You can feel the design. It's uh, being able to replace the nibs. You can remove the clip if you wanted to. The CEO has gone on record to say, this is just the beginning. They're already working on other colors. So for those that are gonna skip this one and wait for other colors, your day is coming soon. What colors? I mean, we all know the beat, right? We never know what's gonna come out, but Caveco never disappoints when it comes to colors. And um, so I really wanted to leave Caveco with that strong message of, I really am thankful they finally and can publish or not publish, but get this out there to the market. Um, another thing that I was just, you know, thinking about is maybe launching other different metals, right? Today we have the Al, maybe there's different, um, we'll see this in a bronze. I know that's a lot heavier, so that's gonna be interesting if they get there. Uh, maybe a steel, not sure about that. Definitely plastic. I know that's not a metal, but it's a different body material that I'd be definitely interested in. And separate from the different metals and materials to use for the body, I would also love to see Caveco bring back that, you know, Art Deco, the diagonal stripes that they put on a couple of their older pens. And there's a couple modern pens with that design. I think that in itself would also be another great design to release. I don't wanna forget this section because yes, we just got a new pen. What more can we ask for? As a pen community, can always ask for more. Actually, as a pen enthusiast, um, I'm one that loves customization, that loves design. And so here are a couple requests I have for Coveco, uh, Coveco Marketing, anybody in the company, if you're listening, uh, just a couple thoughts. I know it takes time, but one of my huge things I'm going to ask for when it comes to the piston uh, Caveco now released is bigger nib. This is a size five nib. Can we please, please have a size six? I would love it. I love the, the, the five. It's perfect for your pen designs but to have a size six would just be amazing, especially on the Owl Sport Edition type. So that's number one. Number two, since we can, you know, change up the clip, uh, you know, unscrewing this, I saw this on somebody, other, somebody else's video, uh, and maybe different clip colors, maybe like an all black as you have on other designs, or silver. Uh, that's something that I also look forward to in regards to not just different colors of the body, but different trims. Instead of the gold trim, it's the silver trim. It's the all black trim. I really look forward to that and hope to see that very soon. So that's another request to have different trims, um, all gold, all silver, all black. Um, even if it's to, to being able to swap out the nib, have an all black nib, all silver nib, that would be great. And then change up the nib. I'd be okay with just having like a nice hint of the gold there, but Hey, I can currently do these customizations on your other sports, um, uh, minus the size six nib. And I'd love to see that for the, the piston sport that those are my thoughts. I'm going to continue to use this pen, see how I feel about it on a daily use, a regular rotation use. Uh, this is a great start. And before I sign off, please hit that follow button here on YouTube. I do plan on publishing more unboxing and other pen related content, testing out different nibs, interviewing different folks. And 
I just want to hear your feedback too. So hit that follow button, please. Head over to Instagram and TikTok, search Stationary Stack, and please also follow us on those channels. I appreciate you watching this video. Let me know what you think. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great day with that lovely pen.